Google announced that its free Google Photos cloud storage is going away, but I'm gonna show you how to create your own cloud storage for your photos next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. And today we're gonna to talk about photos, my photos, all those photos and videos that I uploaded to Google since 2015. That's when Google Photos launched in the iteration that it is today, which is essentially unlimited uploads. I always had a Pixel phone, and so Google had a really sweet deal for Pixel owners where we could upload all of our photos and our videos to their cloud for free in original quality. And in the last couple of years, they've tapered that off a little bit. They've taken that down to high quality instead of original quality, and future phones you know, don't apply, that sort of stuff. But now they're making a big change for everyone, and that's to say that in June 2021, any photos and videos that you upload to the cloud to their Google Photos service will count against your Google storage allotment. And if you don't have enough of that storage, you're going to have to pay for it. It's not that much depending on your plan. It's Google One is the name of that service, but you will have to pay for it going forward. Anything prior to June 2021 will already be grandfathered in to that free storage, at least until the next time uh, the rules get changed. So keep that in mind. You know, what you already have up there is going to be free going forward. It will not. So this has a lot of people thinking about what they want to do with their photos and their videos uh, going forward. How do you want to store those? What server or what cloud do you want to store them in? And I'm here to show you how to own your photo cloud storage, essentially using Plex, which if you remember episode 39 of Hands on Android, I showed you how to take your Google Play Music library down from Google Takeout and put it onto a, a Plex server so that you own that music. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that with photos now. And uh, there's really not a whole lot to it. It's in many ways, it's a similar process, but there are some speed bumps. So let's get started. So first things first, I need to request my data from Google. And for this, I'm gonna use the Google Takeout tool. This is Google's data retrieval system. You might remember that uh, from episode 39. Go to takeout.google.com and make sure that you're logged into your Google account when asked. Now up at the top of products, I'm gonna to toggle deselect all, and then I'm gonna scroll down to Google Photos and toggle just Google Photos. Now, when you're here, you have the option of selecting only certain photo albums, uh, but by default, all of your photo albums on the account are included. You can go in there and deselect if you like, or just take them all as they are. This way you'll get everything in your takeout request. That's photos, that's videos, everything. Now scroll down to the bottom and select next step. And here you'll choose the delivery method. Could be any number of cloud drop boxes, of course, but I'm gonna go ahead and opt for a link in an email. I'm gonna get an email essentially when this is ready to be downloaded. This will allow me to download all of the files that are created as a result of the takeout request. And then below that, how large do I want these archive files to be? Now, considering I know that I have an insane amount of photos and videos in my library, I'm selecting the full, the biggest 50 gig file that it allows me to. This is gonna make it hopefully a bit easier for me on the back end. Now I'm gonna to click to create export and then I wait. And for an archive this large, I could be waiting for a while. Now once I finally get that email, I can click right into takeout and begin to download the archive files that were created there. Now in my case, there was nearly one terabyte of photo and video data. So I'd have to download each of these 50 gig files one by one and then unzip them into a folder on a drive that has ample storage space to store them. So for the purposes of this walkthrough, I'm gonna just focus on one of these 50 gig zip files just because otherwise it's gonna take forever. So I've connected my external Plex hard drive and I'm gonna move the zip file, the 50 gig zip file over to a photos folder that I've actually created on that drive. This is the drive that's going to be plugged into my Nvidia Shield TV uh, to be my Plex server from. And of course, moving that over takes time, but 
once that wraps up, I'll go ahead and unzip the contents of that zip file into that folder, which again, you guessed it, takes time. Overall, consider that this all ends up taking quite a bit of time. In fact, this one 50 gig zip file that I've selected for this demo took me 40 minutes just to move over and unzip. There are probably faster ways to do this, but that's what it took me. Imagine if I did the full terabyte as I will once I'm actually done recording this episode. Okay. So make time and space for this in your schedule because you're going to need it. Now, once it's unzipped, I can see the full album structure of my images in the directory. Now, granted, some of these folders don't have images in them yet. They will once I actually download the remaining Google Takeout zip files and unzip them here, all of them, that is. But it's a start and should be enough to kind of show the rest of the process to you, because keep in mind, I am just using that one 50 gig zip file. So I plugged my hard drive up to my NVIDIA Shield TV. That's where my Plex server is going to be running from. And I've loaded that up. Uh, now I need to tell Plex to look at the photos that I just added on that hard drive. So on my laptop, I'm going to navigate to app.plex.tv slash desktop. And, you know, you want to be sure, obviously, that you're logged into your Plex account. I'm going to go ahead and tap on settings and then scroll down to manage libraries. And when I'm here, I can then add a library. And the type of library that I'm adding is of course a photos library. So I'll select that and hit next. And now I wanna browse for the media folder that I just created on this drive, the folder that actually contains the photos that I unzipped already. So I'm gonna point it at that directory that contains all of those photo album folders and then hit add. Now. I'm also gonna jump into advanced. I wanna be sure that video preview thumbnails is on. That might take some time to generate, but that'll give me some nice thumbnails. The tag photos option is uh, something to consider. It's something only Plex Pass subscribers can use. So you can look up Plex Pass to see if it's worth it for you. Plex will automatically scan and tag my photos, making them easier to find in search. Now. Keep in mind that a small 25K thumb of each photo is uploaded to an image server uh, via Plex. That's to analyze it and then tags are associated with the image and then sent back to the Plex media server. So this is totally optional, but it attempts to replicate Google Photos incredibly dynamic search functionality. I'm actually gonna leave this off for now. I can of course activate it later and set that up then. And now I'm gonna add the library. And when I do that, Plex gets right to work scanning every folder in that library location. So again, give it more time to do its job, although it doesn't take that long. Now, once that process is done, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Plex on my phone. This is the idea that I wanna access all of these images and videos from wherever I happen to be on whatever device I happen to be using. And as you can see, I have a full library of images familiar sorting options, similar to Google Photos, of course. I will say that it's noticeably laggier, but I suppose that's kind of the power of Google's cloud servers speeding things up when you're using Google Photos. So then, that all brought my library over to my own Plex server. It's available on whatever device I wanna to connect to it. It's always there, I can browse, I can search, everything from whatever device I'm using. But what about new photos that I take on my device? How can I be sure that those are added to this new library automatically, similar to what Google Photos does when I take photos? Well, in the Plex app on my phone, I'm gonna go ahead and open settings and then open the camera upload settings. This will be sure that any photos and videos that I take on my device are gonna be automatically uploaded to my Plex server. I just select the photos library that I already set up within Plex. I can either choose to have all new photos uploaded to a new album that I can create now, or I can leave it blank. And in doing so, that's gonna add those photos and videos to the main library, uh, which is what I'm actually gonna do here. And then I'll enable upload automatically so that it all gets uploaded automatically. And finally, I can choose to keep those costly uploads from happening while I'm on mobile data. And that's my choice here. I wanna make it so that it only does those uploads when I'm on Wi-Fi. 
And once I do all of that, the app actually gets right to work, looking for any new photos and videos on my phone uh, that haven't been added yet, and then uploading them to my Plex server. And really, there's nothing else to it. Going forward, everything should be smooth as silk. So then that leaves me with my next step, and it's kind of daunting. I have to do all of this, but with all of my photo library, and uh, it's going to take me some time. So <laughs> you can understand why I kind of trimmed it down for the purposes of this demo. You might notice when you do the Google takeout request that you end up with a bunch of extra data files, JSON files, in fact. And I don't know how necessary they are for the Plex uh, setup, so I, I plan on removing those for the export when I move things over, just to kind of clean things up. They don't necessarily need to be there. They aren't gonna do me any good. All they're doing is cluttering the drive space. So I'm gonna remove them. I don't know how necessary that is though. You can probably get by by just leaving them intact. Uh, but if you do this, I would love to hear how it goes for you. So send me an email, hoa at twit.tv and let me know how this goes for you. What did you find along the way? I hope it works for you though. Uh, and then you can subscribe to this show, twit.tv slash hoa. Check out the show page on the web. That's where you can subscribe in audio and video formats, your podcatcher of choice. You can even link out to YouTube and subscribe and like and do all of your YouTube things out there. And I really appreciate it. No matter what, just watch and listen. That's all I care about. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And big thanks to John Ashley for editing this together each and every week. We will all see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are gonna help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv slash hop to learn more.